What is good, people? This is your boy, the Bad Wolf, once again, doing those mad things like bringing you guys all the fire goodies. So uh, once again, if this is your first time here, hit the bell, like, subscribe. If you'd be ever so kind, be kind. Please rewind. Um, that might have showed my age a little bit. I don't think you can rewind anything. Right there. All right, let's get going. So once again, guys, as always, if you do see anybody using any of my information, please feel free to use well, which, whichever way the re report button is on using any of my information, likenesses, logos, whatever else, or deformation of my character. If it's in a negative way, hit that button. Appreciate it. Otherwise, all the information on how to get hold of me, consults, and whatever else files are all down below if you don't see them down there, including merchandise. Please feel free to go to blacksite32.com. Also, I'm on Patreon, so you can support over there if you want. Otherwise, go to YouTube channel James C. Lovett, or else YouTube channel forward slash at the bad wolf, at sign, then the bad wolf. Once you're there, you can join the Wolf Pack if you want to help support me monthly. That'd be ever so nice of you guys. And without further ado, time to bring you what you were looking for. So... What happens or what do you do when a county clerk or recorder of deeds, etc., refuses to record your documents, your instruments, or whatever else? Okay. So one, you're gonna you're gonna get a written explanation. You don't want just a verbal. If they're gonna deny you, they have to provide legal proof. I need a legal reason. Whether it's your internal code, your personal code, whatever it is. And if they won't do it, you're going to want to talk to their boss. Who's your boss? They don't want to do it. Who's your boss? Okay. Don't stop. Can't stop. So you want it in writing. Okay. You need a chain of evidence. Okay. Because we're about to go after them Wiley style. Okay. So as per your state, you might have a UCC code section 3-501 uh, or 3-505. But anyway, if you don't have that, you don't know what it is, don't worry about it. What you're going to want to do is send a notice and demand for exhibition or presentment without dishonor, okay, by certified mail to the county office, the county clerk, your court of deeds, et cetera, et cetera, um, that refused to accept your lien or your statement, your filing, whatever it is. <laughs> Excuse me. In that notice of demand, demand that they produce for your viewing the statute or law passed by legislation which authorizes them to condemn the public records for their personal or private use. You're going to want them to um, show you, declare in there, the statute of law passed that authorizes them to edit or censor documents prior to recording. Okay. This can go for post office and whoever else, okay? They don't have the right to do that. That is tampering with information. They're tampering with personal documents, private documents, federal documents, federal applications, whatever it is. They need to be able to prove to you why they can do what they can do. Now, like if they're accepting the DS-11, they are in fact the acceptance agent. So if they feel that this is fraudulent or something, or that it actually breaks a actual law or legislation or something, then they can deny it. But they can't just say, oh, that's now how you fill it out. It's not for them to decide how you fill it out. It's, just, it's up to them to decide if this is fraud or illegal or break some kind of law or code. If it does not, then they cannot recommend you do anything. Matter of fact, if they tell you this is what you, you need to do, then that's providing legal advice. And you say, are you licensed to provide me with legal advice? No. And by breaking a law or a statute, can you please provide me that in writing? If not, I need to talk to your boss. OK, when their boss comes out, you talk to them nicely, politely. In the private, you tell them, I want to speak to you privately. You tell them that you are a private person, private, natural person, and that uh, you are trying to get this, whatever it is done. OK, next thing would be uh, asking for their personal bar or lawyer ID issued by the state bar or state Supreme Court, which authorizes them to make legal determinations. If they don't have that, they can't do it. Okay, so what you're going to want to do from there is uh, give them a reasonable amount of time to comply. So the minimum is usually three days. You can go 15. The industry standard is 30. Anything beyond that is up to you, but 
30 days is way more than reasonable enough. I usually go with 15. It's up to you, okay? You want to give them that notice to comply with your demand to prove by with written authority and then put on them on the notice that the law of principle and agents specifically applies that the agent is personally liable for acts not authorized by the principal. So unless there are any laws granting the clerk the power to refuse to record certain records or documents, the clerk agent has no corporate veil of immunity for his or her refusal and may be personally vulnerable for the lawsuit, okay, or a lawsuit in federal district court. So you can also ask them if they have a bond. They don't want to provide that. So what's your bond? What's your bond number? Will you... Uh, What's your insurance company? Are you under a blanket or are you under uh, your own? Or what, you know, who, who, how are you protected? Okay, because I'm about to make a claim. So if the reasonable amount of time has elapsed or has been surpassed and they have failed to produce the written authority you demanded, send the notice of default by certified mail notif notifying them that they have defaulted on not answering and providing them now with a right to cure. This is called the administrative process. Okay, so by default, you're recording your by not recording your original lien or other documents, whatever you have in place, without further interference or suffer the consequences and allow, you know, anywhere between, like I said, another 15 days. Once again, 30 is up to you. That, that to me, that takes too long. It's it's two months. I'm not waiting that long. Okay, I, I know by law we don't have to really give them any three business days to comply. So I might give seven and seven, or I might get 15 and 15, but once again, it's up to you. Um, so if they do not respond to that by certified mail, once again, notice of amount due. So for the damage caused by the injury to you or your property or your rights, um, derelict of, dereliction of duty, default, unauthorized refusal of, of record, um, send, you know, you're going to send them a bill for $1,000. And then give them a reasonable time to pay you. Once again, 15 days, 30 days, up to you. After that particular time, plus four or five deals for, you know, mail or whatever else, you're going to send a notice of final amount due. Okay. Then after that point in time, um, you're going to go to your county elected peace officer or your sheriff. Present copies of these two certified mail documents that you sent to them demanding for payment. Okay, sign a distress warrant or distraint uh, warrant stating that you have not been paid and have to go to the sheriff now to get your money. Or, you know, they need to sell, you know, whatever it is to take from them whatever you need to pay us for not doing your job. Now, you can also go to send this to your secretary of state and your attorney general. Okay, they are there to help you. All right. So at any stage of this particular procedure, you can send the offending clerk a letter and offer to settle or another right to cure uh, default letter. OK, so if they perform their sworn duty and record without debate, your document or whatever else you've been trying to put in there is all to the good. But if they fail or refuse, then what you're going to want to do like once again is, is contact your sheriff. OK. So even after the sheriff takes some of their property, you might still offer to give them back their car or whatever else, um, or once again, go after their bonds, okay? So if the sheriff, however, refuses to perform his sworn duty, because remember, they all take oaths, uh, oaths of office, okay? But if the sheriff doesn't want to comply with their sworn duty, with their oath of office, Okay, you're gonna have to execute upon them a distraint warrant, inform him or her that you are personally, that you personally will perform his sworn duty for him or her and on his behalf. Inform them also that the newspapers will be informed that he has refused to perform his sworn duty of office, uh, but continues to cash his paycheck. And this constitutes fraud by him since he only or he or she performs selective enforcement of the law which is unlawful, okay? So you're going to inform him or her that they that this reluctance of their public duty may have negative impact, impact on their chances on running for re-election and that you may have to sue him in his personal capacity for money damages due to his dereliction of duty, the uh, embezzlement of public funds, damage due to 
to the injury or damage due to your property, your rights, et cetera, et cetera. Once again, here's a point in time where you're going to want to contact the Secretary of State and your Attorney General and tell them this information. Okay. Send the sheriff a certified mail and notice and demand for production or uh, exhibition without dishonor of the law and or statutes that authorizes him to perform selective enforcement. Okay. Personally edit and censor documents or refuse to perform his duty under sworn oath. This is perjury. Except the people's pay and not execute lawful warrants. Okay. So if the sheriff or the recorder's deed office or whoever else says that they are that they take their orders from the government, okay, or from the government lawyer, that's fine. Get that in writing. Okay, I need to, in order for this to be a, a legal thing, which you guys are part of the legal system, I need that I need a legal uh, document or a document with this information on there so that this is made legal. Okay, so this will be an admission or confession, um, which becomes a second part of this evidence piece that you're going to use later on against them. Okay, so after you've done all the above and you send in that information, Okay, then you're going to, uh, once again, go forward with the last part. So you don't want to just jump to the last part. You have to build, you have to do the administrative process, show the chain of command was broken or ignored, and then you can move forward from there. Okay, so now we're going to go into a little bit of information um, in general. We'll call this the subtle superfluities or the subtle nuances of the, uh, these types of things. So when dealing with the registrar or recorder, don't allow them to make any le legal determinations for you. If they say this doesn't look right or this doesn't seem legal or this or I don't think you can really do this. OK. Um, I have not hired you to represent me. I do not give you permission to make legal determinations. If you do not make if you do make a legal determination without my permission, you are practicing law without a license. OK. These are also some of the things that your judges do. But remember, if in fact you are presenting yourself as a legal slash political person, entity, 14th Amendment U.S. citizen, because you haven't watched my video on the 12 presumptions of court, then they can do these things because you are underneath them. When you're in your proper capacity, you overstand them. When you are not, you are understand or understood by them. Okay, Either you're standing over somebody, you're standing with them, or you're standing under you're standing, okay? Even though we say correct your status, a status is of something that's a non-living entity. Really, we should be using your standing because it is where you as a man or a woman or et cetera are standing. Are you standing on the land? Are you standing over something, okay? So um, you can also research your state's code. Look for sections uh, concerning crimes against justice uh, you'll probably find two or three sections pertaining to destroying and stealing public records, conspiracy to defeat um, enforcement of laws, um, destroying or stealing records, um, um, forging documents, uh, providing legal information without a license, things of that nature. Okay. Does not hurt to bring a tape recorder or something like that, keep it in your pocket or whatever else and record the scenario, just in case things get a little squirrely, okay? So, okay, so if you have any problems, let's say with your job or something else, um, remember, you can go to the EEOC, Equal Opportunity Employment Agency. You can also contact the American Rights Litigators. Um, their phone might have changed, but at this point in time, it's 352-383-9100. Uh, okay. They can help by writing up very professional letters for you, okay, to use at any or against any other third party, such as banks, employers, etc. Remember, you want to you want you want your documents processed. That's the biggest thing. So don't go in there trying to be short with them just to try to start up a case or whatever else. Always make sure that you self-govern. Okay. So 
You can also point out their incorrect recording of their files with the IRS form 668. Okay. Um, the IRS form 668 notice should be recorded as a notice and not a lien. Okay. When they record it in their lien books, it becomes negotiable and enforceable. All right. At the end of the day, let's say for some reason they give you a really hard time. They say, well, here's our code. You can't do this. We refuse your legal instruments on these reasons. Okay. So you're going to want to then contact either call or send a letter to the Secretary of State involving this particular information so that you can say, hey, they wouldn't do these particular things. So here's a little bit of additional information on that. So if the county recorder or whoever else refuses you, you can have, you can have your legal instruments serve on the Secretary of State. Okay, they are required to record it. Okay, this of course will not get your UCC3 into the county um, recorder's office or whatever else where it belongs. So the following is suggested. Include a cover letter informing them that since your right to record legal instruments at the county or on the county level of or whoever, whatever county it is, has been compromised, okay, through legislation or refusal by code or whatever else, that you expect them, okay, your secretary, to represent you at, at your county and to certify the recording of your legal instrument as well. Mention that you want to be notified by mail of the certification of your legal instrument at the recorder's office, okay? All right. So once again, if the clerk refuses to file documents, what happens when the court dishonors a man and refuses to allow common law, meaning a court of records in the court? So pursuant to federal rule of civil procedures, which is why. OK, I don't know where I put it. Which is weird. It's a bright red book. Okay, so, huzzah. Okay, so unless something has changed, this information should be updated. According to the Federal Rules of, of Civil Procedure, uh, 5D4, the clerk's office cannot refuse to file a document only because it is not in the form prescribed by the federal rules or local rules. If the document is submitted for filing contains specific <clears throat> substantive defects, the intake clerk will stamp the document as received but not filed <clears throat> and prepare a notice of document discrepancy for review by the judge. The person filing a document will be given a copy of the notice. The judge may order the paper stricken or returned to counsel after they are examined. It is recommended counsel follow any directions given on the accompanying discrepancy form to correct said, said deficiencies. Okay. So basic issues. Okay. So the biggest thing is that we face is a lack of inter integrity within the legal society or the political, okay? At many times, depending on the person or people abusing the information, et cetera, okay? So you have to pay attention that, and it takes some time, but you have to be specific on what you're doing. So assume that none of them are your friends. Matter of fact, they're assuming that you are a 14th Amendment US citizen, okay? So you're not even literally equal to them at that point in time, you are beneath them, all right? So even if you try to be nice about it, um, to them, essentially, if you're not doing what they say or believe, it is pretty much war, okay? But it still is a good thing to self-govern and hold yourself in good honor, okay? So they may be attempting to talk to you to reduce your status and thus accepting their jurisdiction, okay? So they like to play those games as well, all right? So remember to politely remind them that and ask them, are you not a public officer? Well, yes, I am. All right. Well, I'm a private, natural person, and I am not a legal entity. So I'm speaking to you as the beneficiary, okay, or as a private person. So it is your right to use common law, okay, 
While most judges and magistrates don't feel threatened by common law, others see it as absolute threat to their closed union or their way of life, okay, their jurisdiction. So if everyone began using common law, their revenue generating system, we will just say, uh, would probably start to collapse, okay? Take some uh, hits to the pocket of the people, especially, you know? So because many clerks serve as good uh, measures for the chief judge, okay? So if you have a problem with your so-called magistrates or whatever else, remember, you can always take your information or send your information directly to the chief judge who is their judge, okay? They tend to, they are the ones who are set the precedent and can make the real things happen. Um, and yes, there are honorable judges out there, but, um, you know, treat them with respect because they're, the, they're, should be the real deal as long as everything's up to par. Okay. So you should have a judge or clerk to record their oaths and performance bonds into a case before proceeding. Be sure to use this when it is needed. You can always give them fair warning, okay, or a basic just notice to the person that interferes with his right to move a claim. And finally, the man may make a claim against the person that trespasses against his rights. So the courthouse was built with public phone funds traditionally, or it should have been, okay, to serve the public, all right? Sometimes they are private. Sometimes even judges have stock in them, okay? So that is conflict of interest, all right? Uh, we pay a filing fee, therefore have exclusive uses of these public places, all right? It's one of the things you can ask. Is this courthouse public or is it private? Do you have... Does the judge, does the uh, secretary, uh, the clerk, or whoever else have any stock in here? Okay, just to make sure there's no conflicts of, of, of uh, interest. So another tip is if they deny you your recording, cite Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, once again, 5D4, and ask their supervisor and request their oaths of office. Then request to see the district attorney because the recorder is denying due process and you want to file a complaint. Uh, many times uh, the issue is just formatting um, or the title of your document. If they don't have a category for your particular type of document uh, and it makes it difficult for you to understand such things, ask about this in advance. Also, if you have a legal case file open, get all of your documents in that file early so that they can appear on record. It's harder for them to deny entering documents in a case um, than simply recording them. So if you are interested in getting a um, you know, recorder's refusal document that you can use essentially against them, all you really have to do is go on Google and type in um, sample uh, recorder refusal document or refusal document of public official. A official refused to uh, file a public document complaint form, okay? So you can also look up these things too. So if your county clerk refuses to record, you're going to want to look up the National Public Record Registry. So here's where you can go hassle-free recording of your commercial and public documents. National Public Record registry takes away the aggravation of having to deal with county clerks that do not do their jobs or and don't honor the, the law or the Constitution, okay? Um, okay, so you can actually go, their website is nationalpublicrecordregistry.info forward slash welcome dot html, okay? You can also, once again, send it to the Secretary of your state to be filed there and also file your complaints and go at it from there. Um, so one of the codes that you can use would be, um, let's see here. You can look up crime against justice under statutes at large, section 5403, and it's punishable by a $2,000 fine and up to three years in jail. Okay. 
Um, you can also look up on the same thing, title LXX Crimes, Chapter 4, Crimes Against Justice, Section 5407, Conspiracy to Defeat Enforcement of the Laws. Okay. And in the same section, you can go to section, uh, also another code is 5408, which is destroying record by officer in charge. All right. So that's about it, guys. That is all the information I can tell you on somebody who does not want to file your particular documents, refusal or tampering with evidence, um, legal advice or anything associated. So that's it. Don't forget to hit the bell, like, subscribe. I definitely appreciate each and every one of you guys. Don't forget to come back and check out more information. So that's it. Get out of here. Enjoy the day. Do something crazy. I'm having a yogurt because it's healthy and good for your gut bacteria. A lot of people don't understand that um, yogurt, and especially uh, now, you, sh you can get a probiotic. This is what I use. And you'd be surprised what those little bacteria can do for your gut. Even for if you've got um, nasal problems, it usually means that you have um, a lot of bad bacteria in there. You should flush that out and get some good probiotic material in there. Your ears as well, um, because we're not getting a lot of that by not being outside in the dirt and getting the natural good stuff. Unfortunately, a lot of the bad stuff is out there and the good ones fight the bad stuff. So. Once again, these are just my experiences and providing you guys with a little bit of knowledge. So I will talk to you guys later. Enjoy the rest of your day.